Hey everybody, this is Scott Woods, product manager for SolidWorks Composer here at Hawkridge Systems. And today we're going to be going over the correct way to import your SolidWorks CAD data into SolidWorks Composer. And we'll also be going over updating that data later on. First off, I want to just show the model that we're going to be bringing into Composer. So right now we're in SolidWorks and here's our, our uh, model. If you look at the tree, you can see that there are some issues with this model. Now, any of these complications in any CAD tool, uh, you don't have to worry about once it comes into Composer, because Composer just brings in the 3D geometry. It doesn't care about things like mates or relation errors and stuff like that. As long as the geometry looks good, we can bring it into Composer. Okay, so there are two distinct workflows for bringing data into Composer. We can either take the data from SOLIDWORKS and push it to Composer, or we can open up Composer and actually pull that data into Composer. So I would always suggest if you uh, do not use a uh, data management tool, then uh, you can go either way. So you can open up SOLIDWORKS, export that, open up Composer, import it. If you're using a program such as EPDM workgroup, then the correct method there would be to go into SOLIDWORKS and uh, open up the model, export that as Composer, and then do your Composer stuff from there. If you're using PDM workgroup, uh, you want to, you can go either way, but usually the preferred method for that one is to go into Composer and actually dive into the vault and drag and, uh, and copy your stuff into Composer from there uh, instead of having to, you know, get an engineer to do that for you. So um, let's go ahead and show both those methods. So in, in SOLIDWORKS, I want to simply go File, Save As, and I'm going to go into the pull down list here and go to an SMG file. Now, when I, uh, when I go ahead and save this out to you know, any directory that I want, it's going to go ahead and start exporting, converting, see everything going down here. And, and it's, it's using my default Composer settings. So if you have the Composer player installed, or if you have Composer installed, you go into the uh, default properties for those two programs. And that is what Compo SOLIDWORKS is using to actually export that into that directory. Once that's exported, I can close this down. I don't need it open anymore. Let's go ahead and minimize it. And let's check out where that file is here. So here's the file. I'm going to go ahead and directly open it into Composer just to show what it exported. And there we go. And from here, we could technically go into, into uh, Composer and start modifying it. But because this is a uh, learning video, I guess e-learning video, what we want to do is uh, bring this in correctly. So you can see that this SOLIDWORKS assembly is at the top of the list. So now this SMG file in Composer is tied to that assembly no matter what. You can't really break that link. Uh, however, I want to create a project, but not using project, an SMG project in Composer that I can bring in multiple assemblies and start actually assembling in Composer. Here we can't do that because it's at the top of the tree. So in order to get around that, you just close the document, do a file open, open that same document, but this time say merge into new document. And then the end result is we have a end result is we have a uh, composer project. And you see that uh, we're not actually using the composer projects, but we're using an SMG as a project. So you can see the root, and we have our uh, sub-assembly under that root, and we'll have whatever assemblies we bring into this and so forth. And how you bring other assemblies into this is you go to File, Open, Merge into Current Document right here, and that will start bringing stuff into this project. Now this is option one. And uh, no matter what option you use to import the stuff into Composer, the end result is the same. And so I'm going to go ahead and close this and show option two. Option two is a file open. We're going to say merge into new document. Let's go into our SOLIDWORKS assembly. And we're going to grab this assembly and just use the default settings um, that are actually set on my machine here. And I want to point out what I have as my default settings because it is different from the default settings you have when you first install Composer. Uh, what's most important is that this option here is checked. Merge file into one actor per part. That is very crucial that that is on, especially for SOLIDWORKS assemblies. So what this means is that for every part in SOLIDWORKS is also going to be a part in Composer. Every assembly in SOLIDWORKS is also going to be assembly in Composer. 
If you have a SOLIDWORKS part with multiple bodies, say it has five bodies in a single part and this is unchecked, it's going to bring that part into Composer as a subassembly and every one of the bodies will be a part. Now, because those parts are named, those bodies are named in SOLIDWORKS, like body one, body two, or perhaps cut extrude 24 and, and revolve 32, that's where the parts would be named in Composer and it causes some update issues and complications. So make sure that's checked. Uh, meta properties, this is pretty important, that brings in all the data from the components. Uh, you want to make sure instance names is turned off and uh, in part is bodies because we want solid bodies. And the rest of this really doesn't matter too much unless you're using CATIA, uh, importing from CATIA. Okay, so we're going to say merge into new document. Let's go and open it up. One other thing I didn't point out there is there is a SOLIDWORKS option to the bottom left. And if you click on that SOLIDWORKS option, there is actually an option to choose what configuration is used to import this model. Now, because when I said file open, merge into new document, this is going to merge the SOLIDWORKS assembly into Composer under that root because I'm merging into a new document just like that. End result right now is identical to the other method where we export from SOLIDWORKS as an SMG and then open up Composer and say merge that into a new document. And then virtually right now we're, we're standing at the exact same, um, you know, the exact same spot. So from here, let's go ahead and save this. And I'm just going to overwrite the old one. It doesn't matter. They're, they're actually both identical here. And let's just make a change just because I want to show something here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select everything. Let's do a spherical explode and just kind of blow it up. Okay, so real quick, down and dirty exploded view like that. Now, if I wanted to update this, what I would do is, is go file. Uh, I'm sorry, there's two ways to update this, right? Um, so I'm going to do it a little bit backwards here where I'm going to update strictly from Composer since we already have it open. So let's go ahead and save it. Say I want to update this. We're going to file update. This is going to be option two where I say... I have a new updated assembly of this. Let's uh, navigate to that new assembly. There's the update. I'm going to leave all my settings the same and click update. So what it's going to do here is take the new update file and update my existing composer document. Now in that assembly tree, how it has root at the top and then underneath has my assembly that I'm updating. So what it's going to do is it's going to update just the assembly that's under that root that I have selected. It's the same file name, same assembly. If there was five assemblies, five different assemblies under that root, it would only affect the one that I that uh, that the names match. So here is my update, and see it's red. It also has a longer neck here. Go to my my exploded view, and of course my exploded view is going to copy all those changes because we went ahead and updated it. All right, so let's go ahead and close this down without saving, and I want to open up the SMG file and show how we update it the alternative way. Uh, I guess option one, right? So it, they're both excellent workflows, so it really depends on what works best for you. And uh, let's go ahead and, but this time, of course, we're going to say Roscoe modified, and let's open up this guy here. All right, so I'm opening up the new one in SOLIDWORKS, and I'm going to export this. My other file with this file. So simply go file, save as. We'll go to SOLIDWORKS SMG. Let's go to here and we'll save it as an SMG. I'm going to name this update. Oop. Update with SMG. Okay, I just wanted to have a different name. Uh, the name of the SMG file really doesn't matter. It's actually looking internally into the file at that tree structure for file names for referencing, update, and import. All right, so it's saving out there. It looks like it's done. Let's go ahead and verify that our update worked. And there we go. There's our update file. But you can see this file has nothing done to it, no exploded view, no other view that I created there. So I don't want to use this as my project. This is just a file, a temporary file that we're going to use to update. Now here's my project. Now let's go ahead and go file update. Oh man, I didn't uh, messed up there. Let me go ahead and uh, looks like after I did my stuff, I didn't save it, but let's go ahead and recreate that as if I didn't mess up. And we'll go ahead and save it. And I want to go file update SOLIDWORKS Composer document navigate to that update SMG, file properties the same, update, and just like that, we have our changes.
All right, so there's the front view or the ISO view. Here is the exploded view, and there we go. So what we covered here is importing and updating two separate ways, pushing out of SOLIDWORKS and pulling into Composer. So you can open up SOLIDWORKS, open up your assembly, push that out as an SMG, open up Composer, say merge that into a new document, and then start doing all your stuff in there. Now the update for that method, if you want to take it, stay consistent, you go into SOLIDWORKS, update, open up the assembly, create an update, save as an SMG and just name that update or some it's a temporary file that's going to be deleted later. Go into Composer, use that file to update your Composer, composer um, project. Now the second, second method would be to open up Composer, say file open, navigate to the SOLIDWORKS assembly, open that into, merge that into a new document, and then do everything that you need to do to it. And then when you want to update, you would simply go file, update, navigate back to the SOLIDWORKS assembly, update with the new geometry, and it's as easy as that. All right, so thanks for attending. Again, my, uh, my name is Scott Woods, product manager for uh, SOLIDWORKS Composer here at Hawkridge Systems.